friends, welcome back to my channel. Also, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Cambria. Today I am going to be decorating the kitchen for Christmas. I'm also going to be sharing a awesome fall slash winter soup dinner idea with you guys at the end. This decorating is probably the one I was most happy about doing because you guys know I really, really wanted to get this kitchen finished before the holidays. So knowing that we were able to do that and now I am able to decorate it, it just makes me so, so happy. If you guys have been with my journey since moving into this house, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're new here, we just bought this house uh, back in June and we have pretty much remodeled this house from floor to ceiling, um, doing about 90% of it ourselves. And this kitchen was one of them. So I'm really excited that pretty much the house is complete. There's still projects to be done, but all the big stuff is done and we can just enjoy the holidays and worry about doing more projects come the new year. I am just starting out by cleaning everything. I like to start with a clean slate, especially in the kitchen, because the kitchen's always, like, dirty. The kids are always wanting snacks. There's always stuff to be done. So I definitely wanted to go around and make sure all the dishes were done and put away. The sink was scrubbed out. The counters were wiped down. Um, the backsplash was clean. Just everything was starting off fresh before getting out all of the holiday decor. I have really been enjoying this year like taking my time with decorating. In years past, I would take like two, three days to decorate the entire house. Um, but I have been taking a little bit slower, knowing that it's a new space and trying to figure it out, but also just wanting to enjoy the process a little bit more. So I have really been liking these a little bit slower. I know I'll get it done before December, but not rushing myself. So the one thing I did already have out in the kitchen is that little like gingerbread house is actually a diffuser. I found it on Amazon and I thought it was so cute um, that I got it for the holiday season. I love diffusing um, any type of essential oils. I just love the smell it gives throughout the house. So I had to get that. But working, I like to work in vignettes when it comes to the kitchen. Now, my day-to-day -day decorating, I use a lot of more practical stuff, but with the holidays, obviously I'm going to be adding in a little bit more decor. Um, I made this cutting board last year. I made a little template with my Cricut and burnt it in, um, and then I had my little Ray Dunn canister. I, for a while, was like everyone else and was all about Ray Dunn. I don't have nearly as much as I used to. But I do still love this Christmas utensil holder for the holidays. And then, of course, our little baking Santa. We've had him for years. I'm pretty sure he was a hand-me-down piece, but I can't even remember at this time. I did get, though, these little trees from the Target dollar spot this year. And they are so cute.
These two cutting boards I found at Home Goods this year, and they were so cute. They came in the set together, and I absolutely loved them. At first, I was thinking about just doing them behind the stove, but I found this little sign that I got a couple years back, and I definitely wanted to make space for it, and I thought this would be perfect. Um, I do have still throughout my house um, reminders of what Christmas is all about because obviously Christmas is about so much more than just Christmas lights and decorating and presents and stuff like that. So I wanted to get this put up and then it seemed a little empty so I put this bow on. Um, it was not playing nice but I ended up just using some painter's tape to hold up the edges. That's still not working great so I'm gonna have to get some two side tape but for now it worked out just fine. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old sign for old life? So initially in this corner, I had this thought of putting my Santa with the sleigh in it. Um, but I really want to put Santa in the sleigh and it didn't work. <laughs> the sleigh fit fine underneath, but then putting Santa, he would have to be next to it. And I just didn't love the way it works. That's a lot of decorating, though. A lot of times it's trial and error. Um, what you think might work doesn't work exactly as you wanted. So I pared it down and ended up just doing the little tree in back and adding in a lot of the stuff that I already had there. Um, and I felt like it looked just fine. It added just enough Christmas without being overwhelming. And here again, it's not loving the way it's looking, so moving stuff around again. I ended up just adding in these picks, and then for the lamp, I ended up filling it with ornaments, which I think was such a simple, but made such a pretty effect over in this corner. Like I said, pretty much everything in here is what I had in here already, but adding the little bit of greenery, and then the ornaments in the lamp, I think made a big difference. On this side, I didn't want to go too crazy because I have like things that I grab for all the time. I have my scrub daddy and my with the scrub daddy wand. Um, I was hoping my diffuser would fit on here with the soap dispenser, but it just was not fitting correctly. But I was still able to make it look really cute and just put my little gingerbread house in the corner, adding another one of those trees that I found at Target. And then that little, I don't even know what to call him. He's like a baking sugar cookie looking guy. I don't know exactly what he is. Kind of looks like a snowman. Kind of looks like a baked goods thing. But he works in the kitchen. And then above the window, I'm not going crazy over here, but 
I am adding a thing of garland. Once again, though, I tried using command strips and they just, I swear, like, I know people love command strips. I can almost never get them to work for me. Sometimes I can, but it's so rare. I almost always have to go back to just like the typical hammering in something to hold it because... I can never get them to stick well. And I thought for sure over here it would work because of the tile. It's a real smooth surface and it just was not. So I just put in some little hooks. That way I could hang this garland up here. And then I'm going to do a really simple just putting some snowflake clings all over the window. It's really pretty, but I don't think it's too crazy. You know, I keep saying it's not too crazy, but we all know Bobby and I go insane for the holidays so in my opinion it's not too crazy i know for a lot of people they're like cambria you're insane you have stuff everywhere but i don't know in my opinion it's not too much but <laughs> i guess that's not saying a lot coming from me I knew I wanted to hang a wreath on our pantry door. This wreath is gorgeous and it is from Walmart. So if you guys are looking for something simple when it comes to a wreath, but really, really pretty, go check out Walmart. Like this one, I've seen other ones that are supposed to have that real look and feel um, and they're so expensive. And this one, I can't remember exactly how much it was. All I know is it was far less than any that I have found and then hanging up my Santa photo you guys know I love these more substantial pictures um so I wanted to add him just over to the side of the pantry because that is a the sliding barn door I didn't want it to get knocked it is block um covering the thermometer or thermostat of the house but it's not a big deal if I need to get at it I will just move it um but I wasn't even going to try this time with the command strip. I just went straight to putting a hook in the wall. It's frustrating because I don't want to put holes in the wall, but at the same time, I would rather do this and not have stuff fall and break. And then down the road when I'm all done, I can just do a little touch-up paint and it'll look just fine. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go out. Chilling and having a good, good time So on TikTok, I saw this really cool centerpiece idea that I wanted to recreate. It's using these little Orbeez, the clear ones, um, in your glass vase. So this was filmed on a different day. My mom and aunt were over, along with my uncle and dad and everyone. But my mom and aunt and I did this together. We made it our little pr Sunday project that we did Um where we all had our glass jars and then I literally filled this five gallon bucket with uh, these clear Orbeez. Um, but it turns out so pretty and it's one of those things that in the beginning it's like, okay, this does not make sense. Like, what are you doing? But just wait till you put water in it and they turn out so pretty. I had to recreate it. I highly recommend doing it yourself. Um, we went to like, um, oh, I can't think of it, the dollar store and got just a bunch of random stuff. All of the ones we made look completely different and personalized to us. So this is great to do with any family members you have. If you have kids or like me, it was my mom and my aunt. It was so much fun and we all got to make a personalized Christmas decoration for this year and I absolutely loved it. Santa's gonna come and join us.
And I don't think I forgot, I remember to mention, we also then put the floating candles right on top. So very, very pretty. Um, you'll see, I put this on my island in this video, but in Friday's video, you're actually going to see I end up moving them um, into a different area. I just felt like these seemed a little bit too bulky for my island. I don't like a lot of stuff on the island because... I am real big into cooking and if I am making pasta or bread or anything that I need prep space, I don't like it to be, feel overwhelming. Um, so that is why I end up moving it. Like I said, you will see that in Friday's video where it ends up. All right, to go along with baking, so today I'm going to be sharing with you my loaded baked potato soup in a bread bowl. This is delicious, and these bread bowls are super, super easy to make. So if you guys love like those Panera bread bowls, one of my favorite places to go if we are going to eat out is Panera with their like broccoli cheddar soup. Um, I have all the ingredients on the screen for you guys so you can see exactly what I am doing. The biggest thing though with doing this is letting the yeast sit. You're going to see in a little bit that it turns into this like, you're letting the yeast activate. You're going to see it later. I will show what it looks like when it's fully activated, but I do this first before putting together the dry ingredients because it doesn't take a ton of time, a couple minutes, but it makes all the difference in the world. So this is what it looks like when the yeast activates. So you can see it's like foamy and just different. Um, but now I'm going to add in all the dry ingredients. You guys know when it comes to cooking, like I don't have a lot of measurements because I just kind of eyeball almost all my recipes. However, when it comes to baking, you have to be a little bit precise, which is why I am sharing with you all the different ingredients on the screen because you don't have nearly as much wiggle room when it comes to baking, that's for sure. Now, I ended up kneading this in the mixer for about five minutes. It's a great way to get it to come together all the way. Um, if I had a bigger mixer bowl, this would work a little bit better. But once it came together, I add a little bit of olive oil to, um, I don't I don't even know why I do. It works well every time I do it. Oh, but I'm greasing a bowl because after it's done in the machine i'm going to knead it a little bit by hand but then put it in this bowl that way it can rise for a couple hours before i work with it some more
And then like I said, just knead it out a little bit more, work it together. Um, the nice thing is a lot of it got worked together in the mixing bowl, so I don't have a ton of kneading to do. That is the one thing when making bread, it's can be a lot is kneading it out can get very tiring. So I like using my mixer when it comes to that. I do end up rub making sure the oil is all over it. That way when I set it aside um, it and it rises, I don't need to worry about it sticking to the side of the bowl or anything like that. Now, this is about an hour or two later, not a ton of time later, um, but I end up just getting all the air out of it and then make, cutting it into six pieces. I was making six bread, dole, bread bowls. Um, these are even good if you don't want to use them as bread bowls and you just want really good rolls. My kids actually ate them just cut in half with butter and dipped them into their soup um where bobby and i actually ate them <laughs> like they were supposed to be eaten but either way they are delicious you don't have to use them as bread bowls you could make these into um smaller rolls and just serve them with dinner but i i don't know sometimes i like to be a little bit extra and making the bread bowls are always so delicious and like i said I love the Panera bread bowl, so if, whenever I can do something like this, I'm always all for it. But after you get them into the six pieces, you're going to want to put them on a well-greased baking sheet and then set them aside for another hour or two to rise again before baking them. once again with the magic of editing you guys don't have to wait another hour or two this is what they should look like after an hour or two you're just going to preheat your oven to um, 350 and I believe I had mine in for about 30 minutes you just want to keep an eye on them and when they start browning you know they're done um, but every oven is so different it's kind of hard to say the exact amount of time because you never really know exactly how long they're gonna cook I know when I go to like my mom's house and cook at her house or ever went to my sister's house I always had to keep an eye because everyone's ovens are so different when I say 30 minutes I would probably set your timer for 20 check on them and just kind of play with it from there but you're gonna see right here what they're supposed to look like and then you do want to let them fully cool before you turn them into your bread bowls also if you don't have um, the wire racks to put your baked goods on, I highly recommend it because that's what's going to help make sure the bottoms don't get soggy. I saw someone today putting their cookies on just a regular plate and these little racks you can get really cheap at Walmart and make a huge difference for any type of baking. You put your cookies on them, your bread on them, anything like that so you don't get those saggy bottoms because when it comes to baked goods or anything else no one wants a saggy bottom. All right, on to the soup. So we are going to cut up some potatoes. I did that real quick. And honestly, that became because I forgot to press record when I was cutting them up. So yeah, <laughs> that's why you didn't get to see me cutting them up. Um, but then I am putting bacon into my big pan and I'm going to cook that till it's crispy. It adds a lot of flavor to your soup because you're not going to drain the grease out of it. You're going to make your roux out of the bacon grease and it turns out so good when it comes to cooking a lot of times it's all about layering layering flavors is how you're going to get the best result every time so oh, i take the bacon out but like i said you want to keep all that yummy bacon grease in your pan
I then add about two tablespoons of butter and two-ish tablespoons of garlic in there and let that me like melt down and the garlic get really fragrant. And then after that, I'm going to add about a fourth of a cup of flour and cook that just for a couple minutes. That way you cook out any of the flour taste. It's really important that when you're making a roux, you don't just stop the second it gets pasty. You want to cook it and mix it for a little while. That way you don't have that flour taste in your soup. And then once that's all done, you add some chicken stock. I thought I had chicken stock in my pantry and I was all out. So I ended up just putting some bo chicken bouillon cubes in some hot water. It's the quick and easy way to do it. And then you're going to add your potatoes. And then you add either milk or heavy cream. It really depends on what you add on hand. This day I had heavy cream, so that is what I used. But if you do not have heavy cream, feel free to just use milk. It'll still end up nice and thick and creamy. You don't need to worry about going out and buying something special for this soup. I then add a packet of the um, onion soup mix and mix that all together. You're going to want to let this simmer for a couple hours. That way all those flavors can meld. And then also a stick of cream cheese. This is not supposed to be a healthy meal, guys, so don't come at me. <laughs> it's supposed to be a delicious, like, warm you to the bone type meal because it's getting cold. Now, I know it's not as cold here as it would be if we were in Wisconsin still, but it is, it's even cooling off here. Um, so this is one of those hearty, like, fill you up, keep you warm type meals. And then after it's simmered for a couple hours, add back in the bacon, but make sure to at least keep a little bit to the side to garnish the top of your soup. And then I also add some sharp cheddar cheese as well. But once again, make sure you keep some to the side so that you can garnish the top of your soup. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you are new here, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. That way you don't miss any new videos. Also, it would be a huge help. If you guys know anyone that would love this recipe or this video, share it with a friend. It really helps out my channel when you do stuff like that. Also, I really hope you guys are enjoying these recipes. I have really, really enjoyed sharing them with you. Um, I think part of it is just having a kitchen again to be able to cook like this again feels so good. And I have really been enjoying sharing with you different dinner ideas and appetizer ideas. Let me know in the description below if you have been enjoying these and if you have any recommendations for upcoming videos as well, because I always get the best ideas from you guys. Plus then I know it's something you guys want to watch. But until next time, bye. Let's go outside. The snow is falling down and every child